In an effort to promote trade and investment, Kenya and Italy have decided to sign some sort of a partnership, even as uh, they look at what um, bilateral trade and, of course, agreements can bring to the two countries, most especially the issue of the removal of non-tariff barriers. Now, the avoidance of uh, double taxation agreements, which will boost levels of foreign direct investment, will be the subject of negotiations between the two nations, according to the statements. President William Ruto said during a speech at the State House during a state visit by President uh, Sergio Mattarella of Italy that they had discussed ways to enhance the balance of trade between the two nations. Now, he clarified that the collaboration will focus on agro-industrial uh, ICT and, of course, biofuel projects. And um, they are hoping that when this negotiation comes to bed, it will spring up some sort of revolution in these um, sectors of the Kenyan economy. So joining me um, from Nairobi, Kenya, is Professor Exen Iraqi, and he will be shedding more light um, to this particular discourse. Thank you so much, um, Doctor, for joining us. Uh, professor. Good afternoon, good afternoon, whenever you are. All right. Thank you so much, Professor, for joining us. Now, let's quickly look at the issues. Now, we would like to know what um, the non-tariff barriers, what they actually mean, and what benefits um, this action would lead to by the time Kenya and, of course, Italy um, come together to finalize on the agreement that has been tabled before them. I think that the non-tariff barriers refers to barriers that are not monetary. In, in, that are not monetary. For example, you can inspect goods for health. You can uh, make uh, regulations more tough so that if you want to import something or to export something, it takes longer than expected because no cost to it. But you don't codify it and put it like you have to pay this amount of money, this amount of tax or certain percentage of tax. So if we can remove the non-tax barriers to be easier for the two countries to trade, to be more smoother, and you expect the level of trade to go up. All right, well, uh, one of the main areas of cooperation is um, agriculture, and there's uh, this sort of commitment that both countries are saying they are hoping to reestablish and bring on board, most especially in the construction of the Aro, Kenware, and, of course, the Tari dams. So I'd like you to walk us through um, the many benefits uh, of this particular construction, how it ties to the agricultural sector for the benefit of Kenya. If you look at the Kenyan economy, agriculture is one of the biggest contributors to the gross domestic product. And it so happens that most of this country, most of the parts of this country are arid. They don't get enough water. So if we can build the three dams, that means there will be enough water for agriculture, there will be enough water for drinking, and we expect a very big boost to agriculture so that we can become self-sufficient, if possible, even export food in the long run. So this cooperation will be long overdue in making sure that Kenya does not agriculture does not just depend on rain, but also on dams or water that we have already prepared when it's a lot of rain, and it will be a very big boost to agriculture. All right, let's look at um, the other sectors that were mentioned. That is the information and communication technology sector. And, of course, um, the biofuel um, projects. Uh, that's another project that Kenya is hoping to have some sort of growth, a commitment coming from Italy, maybe in the terms of expertise and equipment that will come. But then um, I'd like to know what potential does Kenya have in these areas? What, what is burden in terms of the ICT and, of course, the biofuel projects that Kenya is hoping to have this sort of support from uh, uh, from Italy now uh, coming on board with them to see how um, some sort of group can come to them. Italy is a much more developed country, so when we think of things like agriculture, things like biofuel, things like ICT, they are much more ahead of us. So we believe that if we can cooperate between the two countries, we learn from one another, then we are going to reduce out of unemployment in this country. We are going to fight more trade. But instead of depending on things like uh, aid, things like donors, we instead we focus more on trade, and that is how we are going to use it, produce unemployment among the young people and among the people who are coming out of school in large numbers. And remember that Kenya's main industry is agriculture. So if we can have an enhancement of agro agro industry by fuels, we are more environmentally friendly, to be a very big boost to the Kenyan economy. 
All right, well, uh, the sign MOU is, according to reports, will enhance opportunities and improve the balance of trade between the two countries. But then would this also reduce the rate on employment that Kenya is currently faced with? Because there have been talks about uh, jobs not being available and people not being able to um, live up in terms of having some sort of livelihood. So would there be a change in the stats as regards uh, unemployment in Kenya? Yeah, there would definitely be because if you look at the current trade between Kenya and a number of developed countries, Kenya suffers from a trade deficit. So we probably import more than export. So we can get a market for agro products, a market for ICT products, a market for such services, then it will go a wrong way in not, un not only uh, or reducing the trade deficit, but also creating an employment. Mm. Reducing an employment. Remember, Kenya is a very young country. About 42% of the population is 14 years and younger. So any trade agreement, any initiative that can reduce unemployment will be welcome not just to the young people, but the country at large. Remember the new president uh, promised that one of the things he wants to tackle head on is youth unemployment. And this is a very good, good initiative at the start of his presidency. Well, in terms of job employment, uh, Professor, this might just be looking good, most especially for entrepreneurs, for business owners, for startups in Kenya. Even as the Italian government has pledged to advance about 14 billion Kenyan shillings uh, in, in the areas of grants and soft loans for various projects in the different sectors of the economy, which would also, in a way, extend to businesses in Kenya. But some people are quite a bit skeptical if these um, grants will be open to all various kinds of of businesses or it will be just a specific sect or a particular category of businesses that operate in Kenya? I think if you look at the report uh, that was, uh, or if you look at the meeting between the two, the two presidents, it was very clear that some of the areas they want to focus are small and medium enterprises, housing, urban settlement, health, and the digital superhighway and the creative economy. So I think the key players in this sector will be the key beneficiaries. to have a multiplier effect in the rest of the industry. So to the new president and to the people in that negotiation, these are the, these are the rolling fruits. But the economy at large will benefit from the 14 billion grants, although it is to specific industries. Uh, let's look at um, the... Uh creative industry of Kenya, because they would also, in a way, uh, be benefiting from it. And that's uh, talking about the creative economy of Kenya. Now, what contributions has that particular sector had on the Kenyan economy? And uh, when this fund eventually comes in, how would it enhance or scale up the operations? Uh, I didn't get your question, clearly. All right, so I said um, the creative economy of Kenya is also another aspect that would be uh, receiving a bit or a part of the fund that will be coming from Italy. But I'd like to know um, the contributions that the creative economy um, or the creative sector or the creative industry of Kenya has had on Kenya's economy maybe for the, for the past 10 years or so, and how this fund, when accessed, will be able to scale up the operations. I think if I go to your question, is about the creative sector of the Kenyan economy. Yeah. The Kenyan young people have been found to be very creative in art, in music, and related areas, and more so in IT. Kenya has a very vibrant IT industry. Young people are coming up with apps. They are doing work for the big multinational corporations like Microsoft, which have a very big hub in Kenya. And we, are, we believe that if this area can be enhanced because of the young people, because of the high level of education, it's going to to increase its contribution to the Kenyan economy. And that can have even a very good effect on the neighboring countries like, like Tanzania, Uganda, and so on, because Kenya is a large player in the East African, in East African community. So this is a rule hanging fruit, and we expect more contribution of it as the economy grows. So um, a lot of um, economists uh, are actually um, not too sure what um, Italy will be benefiting in terms of um, this deal when it is signed. We understand that funds will come into Kenya, um, equipment expertise will be coming to Kenya. But then looking on the side of Italy, what do they stand to benefit? What are they hoping to gain from this um, kind of deal? I think that it's very important that when we have such a deal between two governments, uh, we have very good negotiators. Sometimes you have a very good deal on paper, but when it comes to implementation, then a country gets the low, the low end of the stake. 
So if I can look at this, uh, this probably uh, MOU, I probably can make a better judgment of how good it is. But I believe that if each party plays its part, so that we can benefit from technology transfer from Italy, we can benefit from Italian agriculture, Italian ICT, I think in the long run it is going to benefit the two countries. I'm one of the people who believe that trade is much better than donation. Trade is better, better, much better than aid. And with that is the way we should look at it. That is going to increase the productive capacity of the economy that we learn how to work by ourselves without always being led by somebody else. Uh, uh, Professor, uh, according to reports, Italian firms have been coming to Kenya for a, a, a couple of decades now. And some people are saying that there's a possibility that this will lead to the inflow of more foreigners. And of course, that might actually take the jobs of some Kenyans away. How true is this um, particular postulation? And that's, that's an interesting question because uh, there has always been uh, an issue, for example, some people are saying that in the last uh, 10 years or so, a lot of Chinese foreigners have come and taken our jobs, a lot of foreigners from neighboring countries. But I think uh, if we can um, sign these MOUs in a way that it is, is, it is going to take care of the Kenyan interest, I don't think we need to worry so much about foreigners coming here. Sometimes these foreigners, as long as they are well vetted, they come up with a new idea. They come up with skills that are not available in the local community. They can always be an enhancement. I see U.S., for example, benefiting greatly from foreigners. I see European Union benefiting from foreigners. And there's no way we cannot benefit from the foreign skills and influence as long as they are positive. Hmm. Uh, Professor, before I let you go, um, a couple of weeks back, uh, President William Ruto stood in front of investors and he uh, projected what Kenya has in terms of opportunities and potential if those investors are willing or will be willing to invest into the Kenyan economy. Now, we're seeing um, some vistas being opened by the Kenyan uh, government, as it were, and we're seeing the um, Italian firms and some other couple of investors from different foreign com uh, countries coming into Kenya to invest and to signing sort of deals with them. Now, how do we scale up this kind of conversation to other African countries who are a bit uh, deficit in terms of investment, but then have the potential to attract investors to scale up and to even improve their economy, as it were? I think that's a good question because there are always investors coming to Africa from all over the world. They are going to other developed countries. And at the back of their mind, they want to make money. They want to invest. So we don't just invest just for the sake of it. So once we allow them in, we must always take care of our interests. Whether you're looking at investors in Nigerian oil, in Kenyan coffee, in uh, Central African minerals, or investors want to make money. And they pursue their interests. So we must always be ready to protect our interests as, as they come and invest and make money. So at the end of it is not just about business, but also political interests. In the long run, if we don't do that, we are going to fight ourselves to losing as investors gain. So it is, must be a win-win situation all the time. Mm. All right, thank you so much, uh, Professor Iraqi, for um, joining us on the conversation. Thank you, and have a good afternoon.